Hey folks, hey, this is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin here with another millionaire midnight rant. How's everybody doing here? I haven't heard from you. I haven't been live in about, what, five to six, seven days here. Been out of town. But I'm back. What a great topic for you tonight. I want everybody to come at these words below. It's cut it season. It's cutting season. Okay? Come at those words below for me. It's cutting season. Not cuffing season. Cutting season. It's time, man. And I know I'm talking to someone right now. It's time. It's cutting season. It's time to start cutting certain people out of your life. Okay. But how's everybody doing? This is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin, your host here from Houston, Texas. And I am a black self-made millionaire here. And I, I am in a digital marketing space and I'm worth about $40 million here. And I go live every night at midnight here to talk to you. To talk to the many women around the planet who want more. Okay, comment below if you want more. More money, more love, more happiness, more something, right? And I have selected to dedicate my life. Listen, to dedicate my life to helping others that are working towards designing a better life for them and their families. I'm here to share my philosophy, my my thoughts, my ideologies about living an extraordinary life. Because listen, and this is no cap, and this is no exaggeration. I am living a perfect life. I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed that the universe, God, has allowed me to be able to use my power in a way to be able to create such an outstanding life here. And now, like I said before, I've selected my purpose to be helping others. Helping others to understand their thoughts, their emotions, their stresses, their pains, and how to navigate this planet as long as they should live to navigate it in a way of prosperity, success, love, and happiness. Does that make sense? Okay. So go ahead and comment your names here below because we're going to cut some people tonight. Comment that below. We're going to cut some people tonight because there are some people in our life, in your life, okay, that need to fucking go. You hear me? They need to go. And it doesn't matter how much you love them. Care about these people. They make you feel. Are they familiar? But they are causing you not to make progress in your life. Okay. So go ahead and comment your name. Say below. Hey, treasure. How are you? Let me give everybody a shout out here tonight. Okay. And I miss you guys so much. I I did. I, I took a, a little vacay around the planet here. I had an outstanding time here, and I'm back rejuvenated. Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling just perfect here, and I'm glad to be back here tonight with you. Hey, Empress, how are you? And make sure you take notes here. Take notes. Take notes. Write this stuff down. Don't don't listen. I know some of you in your bed right now laying on your back. Some of you women got buttons on your head. I, know, I get it. I know. Some of you in the dark looking at a dark screen with me and <clears throat> but listen take notes turn the light learn to be an active listener okay because I don't want you to miss something and I don't want you to miss something that can change your entire life here hey Avery how are you Rojan Emmanuel how are you sir comment your names below folks this is live I want to give you guys a shout out here Okay. Okay, Marissa. Kiss that little baby for me. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Leon. 
Heather, how are you? And shout out to all my brand new Genius Grip members. Shout out to you if you purchased the Genius Grip program today, which is a manifestation program. Thank you so much. Love you. Welcome to the family here. And make sure you turn on your notifications as well. Hey, Patricia from Switzerland. We have Make Mike and we have Power of the Mind here. Lisa, Jordy, Kim, Reese, how are you? We have Heather, Sunshine, how are you? Petty, on a mission, let's go. Lisa from Nashville, Tennessee, Esteban, how are you? So, so listen, the, the reason why I was, I was having our, I had a conversation with my daughter tonight, my baby girl, the youngest one. And we were talking about, we had a long conversation tonight. We were just talking about life and talking about emotions. And it's important for you to have those type of delicate conversations with your children because, like, she's 15. She's trying to figure life out. You know, you have all these emotions and hormones and things that are happening with friends. And sometimes you have to be a good listener, not just to advise them. So... That's what I was doing tonight, just listening to her and what she has going on with her life. And if I had the opportunity to give her some advice, I would. But we were talking about different topics here, and we came across it's cutting season. Um, because she's discovering there are certain people that are in her life right now that she loves, that she care about, you know. You know, when we have friends for five years, for 10 years and 15 years, and obviously we want to progress and we want to be rich and successful and happy and married together, right? And you would think that people in your life, um, as you grow with, grow up with them, they want the same things. But she's realizing there are certain people in her life that do not want to change. How many of you right now, now, now let's be honest here. I want you to be honest with me because I truly believe that honesty creates breakthrough here. How many of you right now know if you have somebody in your life that you're giving the same advice to over and over again, but they're not taking it and they're still creating the same toxicity over and over again? Comment below if, if you have someone in your life like that. If you have somebody in your life right now that you feel that you have to help them because you love them, right? And you're always saving their ass or giving them money or ensuring that they're okay. Yet they're continuing to make the same mistakes in life. Come on, comment below if you know somebody like that close to you. It could be your friend. It could be your mama, your daddy, auntie, uncle, primo. Tia, your uncle and cousin, right? How many of you have somebody in your life like that right now that you feel that you have to be there for, right? Because you love them. It could be someone that is from your childhood or someone from college or high school. And you feel that if you're not there, then it may be over for them. Or if you feel if you're not there for them, they might not have anybody else to go to. Be honest. Well, let me share something with you, okay? <clears throat> and I want you to listen to me very closely here if you ever want to be rich and wealthy and if you ever want to be happier than most people. The people in your life, it is not your responsibility to fix them. Okay? Let me say that one more time. You know, you have to really hear this. The people in your life, I'm talking about your, your mama, your daddy, your friends, your best friends, your boo thing, wife, husband. It is not your responsibility to fix these people. And let me tell you why. Because we, as people, we have a very jaded, very adulterated 
definition of the word friendship. And we truly believe that a friend should be there for you forever through thick and thin, right? But that's not the definition. That's not a, that's a toxic definition of friendship. To say that you're going to be there for someone through thick and thin or, you know, whatever you're going through, they're going to be there for you. Because what if you're going through toxicity? What if you're going through some bullshit that you created, that they created for themselves, that was irresponsible? Well, if your friend is still acting like a child and you're an adult. Now, let me tell you how why that affects you as it relates to your self-development, which is necessary for you to be wealthy and rich. If you continue to hold on to these people, whoever they are, that is not adding any value to your life, but you're adding value to their life. If you continue to hold on to these people, you're like a person that's trying to climb a hill with people that are holding on to your ankles. Because success itself is very difficult. It's like climbing a mountain. It's almost like climbing Mount Everest, right? I've never climbed it before, but it's a very difficult mountain to climb, so they say. But imagine trying to climb the tallest mountain in the world where most people never make it to the top and having people on your ankles holding on to you. Well, that's a lot of you. See, a lot of you truly believe that, well, you know, maybe it's something I don't know, the reason why I'm not making more money. It's something that I don't know, the reason why I'm not happy. Something that I don't know because I can't find the woman or the man of my dreams. No, maybe you need to let some people go. Maybe because you have that extra weight that is on your shoulders that is keeping you or disallowing you to make progress in your life. I'll tell you a story. What happened to me? Uh, and I'm going to tell a different one. I'm not going to talk about my ex-girlfriend from 20 years ago. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you about it. I, you know, growing up, when I was in my 20s or even high school, I had three friends. I had two friends, actually. And they were cool friends, close friends. You know, I knew them from elementary, from junior high to high school as an adult. And as a matter of fact, many of you don't know this, but I had a singing group. The singing group was called JTW. It was Josh, Tony, and Wes. And we were singing our little hearts out. You know, it was just our group. And I was friends with these guys for a very long time. And, of course, we had ambitious ambitions. We had dreams, things that we wanted to do. However, and I was very comfortable with them. You know, we would go out all the time and, hang out at each other's houses and chase girls together. You know, I mean, just like your typical relationship with the boys. That was my boys, right? I love my boys, right? We were close. However, that was a period in my life as I got older, I realized that the direction they wanted to go was different from the direction I wanted to go. How many of you can relate? Be honest. Even women. You know, how many of you, you just, you can feel that, you know, certain people, they say they want to go in a certain direction, or they say they want prosperity and success, but yet they're still not changing their attitudes, their behaviors, the things they do, that they're irresponsible. And you can see that they're not changing based off their actions. Okay? Well, that was taking place in my life in my 20s. And in my 20s, at the age of 21, obviously, many of you know the story. I wanted to be rich at 21. 21 is when I made a decision that I needed more money because I was fired and terminated from a job and I made a decision. I need more money and I can't be dependent on someone signing my paycheck. I can't be dependent on a boss. I can't be dependent on a corporation to take care of me and my family here. And, you know, I was doing everything to try to make money. I joined so many different companies and businesses and tried so many things and I still had these friends around me. And I didn't know 
I'm going to be honest with you here tonight. I didn't know that my friends, the interaction with my friends, were the reason that was holding me back. And I'm going to tell you why. See, what many of you don't realize and what you don't understand is, and I was talking to my daughter about this, your environment is so... It is so instrumental to your progression or to your failure in life, your environment, the people that you're around. What I'm saying is you can have the intention to want to be successful, rich, prosperous, loving, great. But if you're around people who suck the energy out of you, if you're around people that you feel mentally drained with, You don't have time to focus on your goals and dreams. As a matter of fact, you don't have the the emotional power to do it. Does that make sense? How many of you have friends right now and they're sucking your emotional power? Like you're just, just, they're, they're draining. They're telling you about their problems, what's going on in their life, what they did, what they didn't do, and how they wish this would happen. And they can't believe they did this. They can't believe that person did this. How many of you have a friend like that right now? Be honest. You may have a parent like that. You may have a significant other like that. Raise your hands. Be honest. Okay? What I want you to understand, you got to understand this because it happened to me. That it, it wasn't because I didn't have a mentor. It's not... That there weren't weren't any opportunities to make money. I had people in my life that I loved and I cared about. But they didn't align with the man I wanted to be. How many of you understand that it takes so much belief and it takes so much emotional power to believe in yourself? How many of you understand that? I don't think you guys realize how, like how much you have to believe in yourself to do something no one in your family has ever done. For example, make a million dollars. No one, no one in my family has ever made a million dollars. And to believe that I can make a million dollars when I'm from the ghetto, I'm from the south side of Houston, Texas. I dropped out of college. Okay. I've been in jail a few times. I had bad credit. Okay. How dare I think that I can make a million dollars? Never made more than, well, I made $100,000, $150,000 a year. But how do I, how, how dare I believe that I can make a million dollars? What you don't realize that when I use the word belief, I'm not just talking about belief. I'm talking about these, your, your emotional belief. You got to believe that even when it's going bad, how many of you right now, there's some things in your life right now, it's just not going so well. So at the same time, you're trying to believe that you're going to be this person that's going to be very successful. You still got to deal with the bullshit, the negativity. Hello? Who am I talking to? The adversity of the present moment. Some of you got kids. Some of you got baby mama. Some of you married. Some of you got toxic relationships. Some of you have a job that's not paying you enough money. Some of you got bills up to your neck. Some of you got debt. So all at the same time, you're trying to believe in something else. You have to deal with all this, all these issues. And these issues are causing you to feel emotional. And at the same time, you got Pook and Ray Ray. Okay, we know who Pookie and Ray Ray is. They always have a problem. They always into something. They always have something that's going wrong in their life. They always bitching and complaining about something. And they know that they have you to go to. Listen, don't be a fool. It's cutting season. Comment those words, but it's cutting season. It is time right now 
where you are right now in your life to cut people off. Let me tell you why, because it's not worth it. You can think about the good times. You can think about the great times. You can think about the times you hung out, the times you did this, the times you did that. You can reminisce all you want. And trust me, in the moment, those are happy moments. However, if these people are debilitating your chances of becoming the man or woman that you would like to be, they got to go. And I realized this. I realized that I didn't have bad friends. They wasn't negative people. Like, don't get it twisted. It's not just negative people. Some of you just think that the environment itself is just negative people. No, these people are not negative. Like my friends, they were positive people. They were cool people. Nice people. But they had jobs. And that's what they wanted to do. And they didn't have big dreams. I'm not saying they didn't have dreams, but they didn't have big dreams. They had dreams like everybody else, such as going to college, get a degree. Like one of my old old friends, he, he got his degree. He's a lawyer now. Other friend, he's a computer person. And they had dreams. But in my opinion, the dreams weren't big enough. And my dreams were large. My friends wouldn't, they weren't talking about making a million dollars. I never heard it. My friends would say things such as, well, if I made a million, I can. If I don't, okay. But it was necessary for me to make a million. See, for them, it was a should. Well, you know, maybe I should, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. But for, for me, it was a must. So I couldn't continue to be around them because they didn't, they, they continually justified where they were in their life. And I wasn't going to justify for anything small. I wasn't going to settle for something that everybody else had. They didn't care. They just wanted a family, some children, some kids, one, two cars, and that's it. But I didn't want that life. I wanted more. I wanted fancy cars. I want to be able to shop when I want to shop. I want to travel when I want to travel. I want to be able to provide my family and my children a lifestyle that they can never dream about. And even though they wasn't negative friends, they had to go. Does that make sense? How many of you right now know somebody in your life they got to go? Be honest. Let me tell you something here. I'm going to talk to you from the top of my heart. It's going to be a mo- one of the most difficult things you'll ever do is cut off people that you love. And I get it. You love them. Because we tend to think about the past when we think about people. Because that's what you think about. You think about the past times, the good times, the great times, the loving times, the awesome times. But you know there's a part of you that knows that these people are not going to be a part of your future. Do you know it? And let me tell you something, it's hard because when you let these people go because now you're alone, oof, stay with me here. You know what I realized? That most people keep friends around because they don't want to be alone. Most people keep friends around, even though these friends are sucking the life out of you. They're draining you, but you only keep them around because you don't want to be alone. Oof. Think about it, because, you know, why would a person want to keep, stay around a person that is mentally draining them? Why do? Why would you want to stay around a person that doesn't align with your dreams. Why would you want to be around a person who makes the same amount of money that you make, that drive the same type of car that you drive, that live in the same type of apartment that you live in, same type of house? Let me ask you a question. This is logical here. Like, how can you grow if you make the same amount of money as if that your friend makes? How do you grow 
You're driving the same type of car, going to the same type of place, you travel the same, do everything in the same. How do you grow as an individual? You don't. You don't grow. You stay the same. You will adapt and you will stay exactly identical to the environment that you're currently in. And I don't care how much willpower you think you have. Some of you think, well, they don't affect me. I know they talk about me, they do this, but it doesn't affect me. It does affect you. You have some people right now that tease you about your dreams. Can I get an amen? Be honest. You have people that are close to you and say, ah, yeah, okay, you're going to make a million. I don't know about that. You're in debt right now. How are you going to make a million dollars? Go get a job. How many of you right now have people in your life that tease you about your goals and dreams? Or they just give you those remarks, those condescending remarks that they're like, oh, okay, you going to do that? Okay, mm, we'll see. All of us do. We all have people like that in our life. The second guess what we're going to do. Just because we have big dreams and crazy dreams or insane dreams. Do you know how many people second guess me? Like my dreams, when I would tell my friends, they were like, okay, Wes. All right, you're going to make a million. Okay, Wes, okay, sure. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Wes, but, you know, you got to get a job for right now. That's what my friends used to tell me because I quit my job. So you got to get a job, man. What are you doing? My friends were trying to pull me back exactly where they were. And I didn't want to be there anymore. I didn't want the job anymore. I didn't want to work for people anymore. But my friends, they were so persuasive and I said, Wesley, you have a family, you have children, you gotta make some money. You just can't throw everything away and try to start a business with nothing. How are you going to support yourself? How many of you got people right now in your life that are like this? Cut them off. Hello? Cut them off. It's cutting seasons. See, what you don't realize, the reason why it's so important to cut certain people out of your life, because it makes room for the people that are necessary in your life that will cause you to progress. You keep holding on to this old baggage. 10 year relationship, 15 years, 20 years, three years, seven years. It's not serving you. How do you know? Look at your life. Are you richer? Are you happier? Are you healthier? Cut them off. Because you're getting older. Some of you are justifying where you are right now. Well, yeah, I know I should be further along in life, but you know, it's getting there. I just had to take care of this and I had, well, yeah, I know this person, I know I need to let them go, but you know, I love them. You know, I'm just, and I just hate just to let this person go because I care about them and I want somebody to be there for me. Let me share something with you. You're doing that person a disservice. What you don't realize that most of you, almost all of you that's listening to my voice right now, some of the people that are in your life right now, you're just enabling these people. You're enabling the behavior. You're causing the behavior to be perpetual. And not just that, you're spending so much time in your little friend groups that you feel so comfortable in You have no time to think about your dreams, your wants, your desires. Why? Because you're too busy dealing with other people's bullshit. See, me, one thing about me, I don't tolerate people's bullshit. I just don't. And if I do, I won't tolerate your bullshit for too long. Okay? I just won't. I can't. That's why some people may say, well, Wesley, you're so... You're just an unemotional person. You're so hard on people. Yeah, I am. Let me tell you something about people. People are adults. You're an adult. You're not a child. So my expectations for you as an adult is that I'm not one of those friends 
that, oh, I'm going to be there for you, you know, if you're, I give examples, say if you're drinking too much at a club and you're drunk, you call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, I am not coming to get you. Don't call me. If you're, if you're somewhere that you don't supposed to be and you call me, I'm not going to be there for you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to inconvenience myself because you choose to act like a child. But some of you, you got friends and people. And listen, I don't care if it's my fucking significant other. It could be my wife, my girlfriend. She better not call me at 3 o'clock in the morning time she's at a club or at a bar drunk and drink. I don't give a fuck. I'm done. I'm hanging up that phone. I'm not coming out there. And if I do, I'm going to come out there one time. When she get to my place, I'm going to pack her fucking bag and she got to go. Because I don't tolerate it. See, a lot of you, you tolerate everything. And since you tolerate everything, you have no opportunity to focus on yourself and you have no standards. Think about it for a second. Think about the money that's in your bank account. I want everybody to think about your bank account right now. Some of you that do have a bank account. I know some of you don't. Think about the money that's in your bank account right now. Why do you think that you have no money in your bank account or you have a little money in your bank account? Think about the car that you're driving right now. Just think about it for a second. Think about your age and where you are in life right now. Why do you think that is? It's not because it's, there's a lack of opportunities on the planet. It's not because there's a lack of mentorship, lack of education. Absolutely not. Many of you have not made progress because your life is similar to your friend's life. Many of you have friends that are just like you. No money in the bank account, bad credit, a bunch of debt, same type of car, same type of job. You procrastinate like they do. Some of you are fat, just like your friends, unhealthy, just like your friends. Think about it for a second. How do you and why would you believe that you're going to make progress in life? You're not. Because, unfortunately, we want to be around people that are comfortable with us. Who understands? I hear this all the time. I just want to be with a person that understands me. I just want to be around people that understand, 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 understand. What does understand has anything to do with making money? Okay? Paying bills. Flying around the world. Buying what you want to buy. Doing what you want to do. How does under, having somebody understand you, how does that elevate you? It doesn't. Some of you are so afraid to break the curse of being comfortable. That's it. That's why you won't let your friends Pookie and Ray Ray go. You won't let them go. Because you're afraid. some of you won't let your girlfriends go, your boyfriends go. You know their relationship is toxic. You know that your goals and dreams are very different from theirs. You know it. You know they downplay your dreams and goals. Listen, I would never in my life be with a person that downplays my goals or my dreams or my desires. I don't care if I was married for one year, 10 years. They got to go. Cut them off. Because your dreams and your desires are everything. That is something that is deep inside of you that you want, that you have a yearning for. And to have someone downplay it, to tease you about it, to talk about you, to let you know that it's not going to happen for you. It hurts. Okay. It hurts. Listen, cut them off. I want you to do something for me tonight. Listen up, queens and kings. I want you to do something for me tonight. I know some of you are not going to do it because some of you are just so afraid. I want you to take your phone and I want you, not just take your phone, you know what? I want you, I want you to do this. I want you to pull out a sheet of paper. Do that for me. Okay? Now, listen, you need to have confidence. And I'm going to need you to be a bit bold here tonight with me here. Because I know some of you are not going to do it. Okay? Because you can't do it because you're fucking weak. But I'm talking to the people 
who are going to make a decision to be strong for a second. Because they know where they are is not where they're supposed to be. And they're not where they're supposed to be because of what they have not or what they are not willing to do. But tonight, you're going to do it. You hear me? I don't care if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. You could be a teenager. I want you to do this with me because it's going to change your entire life here. I want you to take this sheet of paper. And I want you to write five names, three to five names of people that you're going to cut off tonight. Not tomorrow, not in the next hour. I mean, tonight, right now. I want you to write down them names right now. Three to five names of three to five people that you need to cut out of your life. It's not because they're bad people. It's not because they're negative. Listen, they could be motivating. They could be loving. Great. But a person in your life that motivates you and loves you and cares about you is not the person that's going to make you rich. You hear me? It's not going to happen. Okay? Rich people make other rich people rich. If you want to be a healthier person, you want to be or have the body of your dreams, you can't be around people that are fat and overweight and eat unhealthy. I want you to write down three to five names of people that you're willing to cut out of your life tonight. And listen, hey, I get it. I know some of you are like, oh, man. But, uh, but no, man, I can't. I don't want to cut them out. Not Pookie. I love Pookie. Not Ray Ray. No, not Trishonda. No, I love Trishonda. I can't cut her out. No, I mean, she's a little different. But, you know, I love her. Mm. Let me ask you a question. How many of you want to be successfully financially? And when I say, how many of you want to be financially successful? And when I say financially successful, at least a million dollars a year. How many of you? Give me a thumbs up, raise your hand, say me. I'm just curious. Let me take a poll here. I want to make sure I'm talking to the right group here. How many of you? And I want you to be honest with me. Don't bullshit me here. How many of you have a desire to be successful or to be financially successful? And I mean a million dollars a year, minimum. Comment below. Because I'm going to ask you another question here. And this is going to be the kicker. Okay. So, I see people coming the word me. Okay, great. So, how many of your friends that you're close to make a million dollars right now? How many of you would like to drive a better car next year in 2024? I mean, your car is cool, but how many of you like to upgrade to a better car, a car that you desire, a car that you want. How many of you would like to do that? Be honest. How many of you would like to upgrade? Okay. How many of you would like to travel more? Okay. So to make your question, how many of you have friends that have the car of your dreams? How many of you have friends that are close to you have the car of your dreams? No one. How many of you have friends that stay in the gated communities that you would like to stay in? Okay. Close friends. You know, the friends that you talk to every day, you text every day, you see once a week, you go out with. How many of you are your friends that you go to your gated community or their gated community and chill out in their mansion? Okay. None of you. <clears throat> and some of you, you know what's, watch this. Some of you, you have the life that your friends want. How many of you like that? Like your life right now is the type of life that your friend wants, which means that your friends look up to you. Because maybe you got the Mercedes Benz. Maybe you travel a little bit more than they do. Maybe you make more money than them. How many of you have friends like that? You know, friends that are just inferior to you. Come on, comment below. Let me tell you something. 
If you're not willing to be uncomfortable, you're never going to make progress. You're never going to make more money, ever. Okay? You're never going to be rich. You're never going to be wealthy if you're not willing to be uncomfortable. I'm going to tell you what it takes. You just got to cut people out of your life and you can't think about it anymore. If you think about it, who cares? Change the thoughts. You got to cut these people out of your life. Why? Because you need people in your life that are necessary for you to reach your goals and desires. You know, when I cut my friends out of my life, I started to meet new people. And these people were making millions of dollars. And these people were talking differently. These people were reading different type of books. These people used different type of words. Hello? Do you not understand that you have to go through a total reconditioning process? Do you not realize that your friends that you have right now, they all talk a certain way. You talk a certain way as well. I, I can't do that. Well, that's too hard. I don't know if I can do that. Well, I just can't quit my job without a plan. Well, I mean, I don't know if I should spend that money on that program, on that course. What if I lose my money? That's the conversation that many of you are familiar with. What if I fail? What if it don't work out? See, that's different type of conversations. You know, rich and successful people, we don't have conversations like that. You got to change the way that you talk. You got to change the words that come out of your mouth. I know some of you right now, oh, I can do it. I can do it. I believe in myself, Wes. I can do it. I can do it. You're only saying that because I'm live with you right now. But how about when we go off live here? And you have to navigate your life again. When you actually have to do it. Okay? When you have to take that leap of faith. When you have to take risk with money. When you need to invest that money even though you have no money. You got to get around those type of people. The psychology is so important to one's success and to one's failure in life people, the environment. And I know some of you might say, oh, I can't find no successful people. Yeah, that's how broke motherfuckers talk, to be honest with you. Excuse my language. That's how they talk. I can't find nobody successful, Wes. Ain't no one successful in my town. No one successful in my city. No one wants to talk to me. Stop that pity victim talk. That's victim mentality. That's how victims talk. No one's around. I don't know who to find one. Like, how bad do you want what you say you want? Find it. Stop giving me reasons on why you can't find a successful person. Stop giving me reasons on why you don't have enough money to invest. Stop giving me all the reasons why you can't transition your fat body to something that is healthy. Stop giving me all these reasons why you continue to stay in a toxic, contaminating relationship. Okay? Stop. Stop all these stupid ass excuses. Excuses are for losers. It just is. I don't care what the excuse is. It's just for losers. I don't even want to hear your excuse. I don't care how horrible and how horrific. I don't want to hear it. Keep it to yourself. And the only reason why you like that, because your friend is like that. I can, t listen, when I meet people out, when I'm out and about, in the first minute of them speaking to me, I know what type of person this is. I know if it's a person that just bitches and complains about their life, or I know if this is a person that is more optimistic or more positive about their life. Just listen to a person talk. Okay? Tells you everything about them. Tells me exactly the type of people they hang around. The type of environment that they're in. It just When a person opens their mouth, they tell you everything about them. Okay? I will answer questions in a second, guys. I'm almost done. 
I want you to take those three people. Did you write down the three to five people, folks, that you need to cut out of your life right now, that you need to cut out of your life right now? Write them down. And all I want you to do is when you write down the three to five people, I want you to go to your little phone, your Android phone, your iPhone, whatever, and I want you to delete their numbers and block them now. Unfollow them. Block them on Instagram. Do whatever you got to do not to contact these people and they can't contact you. You may say, well, they didn't do anything wrong to me. What if they call you? Who? It don't, it don't matter if they call you. They're blocked. As a matter of fact, put your phone on Do Not Disturb. Take them off your favorites list. Start responding to their texts. And they may say, is something wrong? Say, no, nothing is wrong. But I can't talk to you any longer. I'm busy for the next year. And many of you don't have the balls. You're not bold enough to do that. That's why you're not rich. That's why you're not successful. Because, see, rich and successful people are willing to do the things that most people won't do. You think most people can cut off people in their life that they've been friends with 10, 15, 20 years? No. You think people like yourself can just cut off their parents? No. Hard for you to do that. But see, successful people are willing. Hello? They're willing to do what unsuccessful people won't do. Yeah. Yeah, were my friends upset when I cut them off? Yeah. But I didn't give a damn. Did my parents maybe feel a certain way because I couldn't call them all the time? Maybe so. I didn't care. Because it's my life. That's what you are forgetting. It is your life. You have to live your life for you, not for other people's pleasure. I'm not living my life so people can feel good because I got to call you every day or every week to make you feel good. Well, you didn't check on me. I don't want to check on you. Check on yourself. You're an adult. You're a grown ass man, grown ass woman. Check on yourself. I'm not checking on you. I'm busy. I'm working. I got dreams, big dreams, crazy dreams, dreams that you'll never be able to fathom or imagine. I don't have time for small talk. I don't have time for the chit chat. I don't have time to have futile, useless conversations about nothing. I just don't. See? You got to be like that. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it's important. And it's not because you mean. It has nothing to do with, oh, you just mean, Wes. You're so stolid. You're so just, you're not an emotional man. You don't care about any. Listen, I care about people. I care about you. That's why I'm live with you right now. I care about my parents. I care about my brother. I care about my sister. I care about all these people. Of course. But I care about me more. I just care about me more. You should too. But some of you don't. Some of you say, oh, I love my kids more than I love myself. Well, you just silly. You're stupid. Why would you love? I don't care if it's your ch you. Why would you love another person more than you love yourself? You should love yourself more because it's you, silly. You got to love yourself more than you love anybody on this planet. Why? Because at the end of the day, all you got is yourself. It's only one person, one man, one woman on this planet that can be absolutely categorically consistent with love, with kindness, with joy, with pros prosperity, kind words. It's you. You. You're the only person that every day you wake up, you can say, you know what? You're amazing, Wes. You're amazing. You're great. You're handsome. You're, you're perfect. You're intelligent, Wes. Every day of your life, you can give yourself the words that you want to hear from you. People, they're not going to do that. Okay? It's not going to happen. People are not going to be consistent with you 
on a daily basis because they're dynamic. Okay? They're different. They change. Even, even your parents, how many of you got parents in your life that switch up sometimes? Some days they're loving, some days they're hateful. How many of you got significant others in your life right now? Some days they're loving, sometimes they're hateful. Friends are the same way. Some days they love you, some days they talk behind your back. You got to love yourself more than you love anybody on this planet. Why? Because you got to build yourself up. You got to build up your belief that you can do the things that less than 1% of people on this planet will ever do. You got to believe in yourself so deeply. You got to talk to yourself. You got to tell yourself that you're a king, that you're a queen, that you're amazing, that you're great, that you are intelligent, that you are powerful, that you can do anything on this planet. You have to talk to yourself, young people. I'm sorry they didn't teach you this in school. I know the teacher, the professor, even the pastor didn't share this information with you. But I, Wesley Virgin, I'm going to share it with you. Okay? I'm going to tell you what it takes to be successful, to be financially successful. I'm going to tell you what it takes to be, how to be highly influential, how to be a king, how to be a queen, how to have the respect of others, how to earn more money than you can spend. And it starts with you, your self-development. And it starts with you cutting people off. So, did you do it yet? Did you cut some people off? Those three to five people that I asked you kindly to write down on that sheet of paper, did you cut these people off? Did you block their numbers? Hello? Mm. <laughs> See, the thing is, I want you to realize that I want you to create an environment of success. <laughs> an environment of success is means this. That you only want to surround yourself with those people or things that are beneficial and, and, and that are inclusive of the success that you desire. That's it. We want to put ourselves. That's what I did. That's why I'm rich. I put myself in the environment. Was it uncomfortable? Absolutely. Some conversation I would have with certain people I felt uncomfortable having because I couldn't talk the way that they spoke. They spoke differently. I couldn't communicate the way that they communicated. I could not articulate my words like they were able to articulate their words. Okay. So it was uncomfortable in the beginning. I had to be quiet. I had to be a good listener. Okay. That's what you got to do. First, you got to understand that there are people out here on the planet that you can't attach yourself to. You have to stop using this bullshit excuse about, well, they don't want to talk to me. Well, I tried to reach out to rich people. They don't respond back. Oh, uh, you know, I try to get somebody to help me, but they don't want to help. They don't want to help nobody out. Stop that fucking victim mentality. So what? I got people in my DMs. You're not going to respond back to me. I mean, you read my message. So what? If I read your message, I, I don't have time to respond to you. That means you're going to quit and give up. You're done because I didn't respond to you out of a million, a hundred million people because I didn't respond to your DM. Well, guess what? I didn't want to work with you anyway because you're a loser. Because just because you made a decision one day now, you want to be wealthy, successful, and better your life. And because you reached out to some random successful person on the internet and you expect them to reach out to you, you're stupid. You're silly. We like people that persevere. Because there's a million people just like you that's reaching out to a guy like me every single day of my life. What makes you different? And I don't care what you say. It's about what you do. Are you willing to persevere? Are you willing to persist? I've had people like, many of you know the story of Ariella, the young lady that's my number two right now in my company here. She reached out to me every day for three months. She was always positive. She knew I was reading her or listening and watching her videos because she wanted to work for me. She was 27 years old at the time. And she was just texting me and Reaching out to me, DMing me every single day with the same positive attitude, but the same voracious attitude to win. 
Some of you just give up too quickly. You know why? Because you're around people that give up quickly. You're around those type of people. They, they give up too. So since they give up, you give up. You see how we tend to stay around people that are very familiar to our attitudes, our personality, the things that we do, the places that we go, right? That's why you're like you are because of your environment. You're the, you're the man or the woman that you are today based or stem from the environment that you're currently in, period. Did you get value here tonight? Comment below, did you get value here tonight? Okay. How many of you cut some friends off tonight? And I know some of you may, oh, I already cut them off. Cut them off, cut, cut more off. I know there's some other, listen, you know, this is tough. I get it because, you know, some of you are like, well, you know, this one is, this one is okay. You know, they're not, they not bad. You know, they, they, don't, they don't disrupt me. They don't bother me. Are they rich? I mean, you want to be successful, correct? If you want to be, just think about it for a second. Think outside the box for a second, please. Just be logical. If you want to be financially successful, if you want to be financially successful, why would you hang around people who are not financially successful? This is not fucking chess. This is checkers. Think. If you want to be fit and healthy, why would you hang around fat people or people that are overweight or people that eat donuts and Eat candies and just look unhealthy. I mean, think. This is checkers, ladies and gentlemen. Why hang around people who are not living the life that you want to live and expect that you're going to live the life? You're delusional. It's not going to happen ever. Okay? It's not. One thing about becoming a very financially successful person, you got to do the whole deal. You can't do 90%. You can't even do 99%. You got to do the 100%. You got to do the whole deal, which is inclusive of changing the environment and cutting people off, cutting out the losers, cutting out the complainers, cutting out the people that are not making the amount of money that you want to make, cutting out the people that are driving a car that you don't want to drive, cutting off the people who have jobs. I don't know anybody that's rich from a job. How many of you want to control your own destiny? How do you do that with a job working for a person? Can't. Okay. Many of you have friends and all your friends have jobs. And you're trying to be an entrepreneur. Does that make sense to you? Some of you, you're the only friend that you're the entrepreneur. They all have jobs and you hang around these people. Does that make sense to you? You're stupid. You're not even smart. You're hanging around people. You're the shining light. They all have jobs. They want to be like you. But who's feeding you? And why are you hanging around people that are inferior to you? Why? Because you're comfortable. Because they make you look good. Because you're happy. Oh, yeah, they all look up to me. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the person. Everybody comes to me for the advice. Yeah, but you're never going to make progress. You're never going to progress further from where you currently are. Any questions here? Hey, folks, did you get value here tonight? Okay. Any questions for me? If you got value, come with the word value. And I expect that you deleted some friends from your phone. And, you know, I'm like, man up, women up. Just do it. Don't give me no god darn excuses why you can't do it. Just do it. Just delete them. Who cares? They're not serving you. Are they serving you? Are they adding any value to your life? Are they putting money in your bank account? Are they creating business deals? Listen, there's only a few people that is in my life right now that I talk to or that I have conversations with that doesn't need, doesn't need to give me any value as it relates to any type of company or business. And that's my woman, 
or the woman I'm making love to and my children. That's it. They're the only people that we can have outside random conversations with. But if you're not my woman and you're not my children, I probably don't want to talk to you about anything else if it doesn't relate to putting some money in my pocket or making my life easier to make to help me make more money, period. Because it's like, what's your purpose? Folks, you got to understand, even if you don't know your purpose, you have to have a want to place people in your life because they serve a purpose in your life. People are not in my life just to be in my life. It doesn't make any sense to me. You're not just going to take up space in my life just to be there all because I just want people around. I don't need an entourage. You will never see me with an entourage. It doesn't matter how rich and how successful I become, which I will, which I am. I will never have. I don't need an entourage of people around to make me feel good about myself. I don't need it at all. I need people around me that are productive, that add value. Okay? Any questions for me? If you got value, comment the word value below here. And make sure you listen to it again. Make sure you share this out. If you want me to post this as well, share it. Love it. Because it was for you. Okay? But I'm here to ask any questions for you as well, if you have any. Okay. What are your questions here? <laughs> but I'm dead serious about it. it's cutting season. Listen, folks, it's October, baby. This is 2023. 2023 is almost over. This is going to be another year that you're still stuck in the same situation that you're currently in. Why? Why? Cutting season. When people ask me, well, where do I start, Wes? How do I make a million dollars? How do I become more successful? Cut people out of your life. That's where you need to start. <laughs> Go through your phone. Look at your text messages. Look at the first three to five people that you text all the time. Delete these people. Get rid of them. Love them from afar. Let them know that you can't talk to them for the next year or two. So what? You're going to realize how much time you have. Some of you say, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time. You have time once you start to cut people out of your life. You have plenty of time. Wait, should I invest my first million in a mentor? No. Invest it in yourself. How do I make the transition into my own business? I'm a city bus driver. Well, what do you want to do? Oh, folks, I think I need glasses. I think I've been looking at the laptop too much. What's next? Questions here. Somebody says cut limiting beliefs too. Well, of course, but you get your limiting beliefs from people who think limit. That the people that have limiting beliefs. Remember, you got to get your beliefs from somebody. Right? You don't get them from yourself. You get the beliefs from people, parents, teachers, professors, your friends. So cut the people off. If you cut the people out of your life, then you cut the, the limiting beliefs. See, I, I realized that when I was growing up, my parents, they told me that money was hard. to. You, you know, you have to work hard for money. That was a limiting belief. Because now as an adult, as an older man... I mean, you're older, but younger, sexy man, of course. I realize you don't have to work hard for money. And as a matter of fact, the worst way to make money is to work hard for it. <laughs> I realize money do grow in trees. You just got to find the right seed because I got plenty of money trees in my apartment right now. So, you know, <clears throat> it was a lot of limiting beliefs that I got from my parents here that I had to change. Okay. Any more questions for me? Do I need a physical book to write my goals? All right, can I use my phone? Use a physical book. <clears throat> Any more questions for me? If you got value, show me some love. Either comment below and let me know what you've learned. Or share this or tag a few people in the comments below. 
How long did it take you to start seeing success and have the snowball effect? <clears throat> as soon as I changed my environment, honestly. Folks, you don't realize how impactful changing your environment is to your life. You know, once I got rid of Pookie and Ray Ray and Jun Jun, when I got rid of all these people, I put myself in the environment that I had to succeed. I started to read different books. I started to listen to self-development audio like every day. Like self-development audio, I listen to it every day even now as a successful man. Okay? Questions here. Our neighbors... And cities affect the way we think and talk. Absolutely. Should we consider moving? If you need to move, move. What I'm saying, you got to do what you got to do. You can't make excuses. Oh, I don't have money to move. I don't have this. Listen, I know what you don't fucking have. I get it. I don't have this. I don't have any money to move. I just can't leave. I just can't. I just can't. Well, tell me why you can. Start telling what you can't do and what you're not willing to do. See, that's the disparity between rich and... Rich and poor people or rich and average people. Average and poor people, they'll tell you quickly why they can't do something. Rich and successful people will tell you why they can. And it doesn't mean they know how to do it, but they just know they got to do it. They'll find the answer along the way. That's the difference. Questions for me. Questions. Before I let you go, questions for me. Did you get value? Come with the word value tonight. I mean, below here in the comment section here. Also, cut them off. Cut, the, cut them off. When I get off this phone with you, when I end this live, start cutting the people off. Or you're going to live the same life you lived in 2023. Next year will be the same. You'll see. If not worse, your business will crumble. Your finances will crumble. Your relationships will crumble because you're not making progress. No one stands still in life. There's no such thing as a stagnant life. You're either digressing or progressing. You're either moving forward or moving backwards. You hear me? It's cutting season, baby. You're very welcome. Any more questions for me here? Okay. Any more questions here? And thank you for the shares and likes. I do appreciate that. I love you so much for that. And listen, the more you like and share this, I will continue to do this. I'll continue to go live every night for you as we grow. There's going to be hundreds of millions of people that's going to watch this here. Okay? Take advantage of it now. And I appreciate the shares and likes. Because I'm here for you. I'm your virtual millionaire mentor here. It's the reason why you're listening right now. Everything in life happens for a reason. And it's a reason why you're listening to this right now in this moment in your life. I don't know where you are in your life, but everything in life happens for a reason. It's a reason why you're here. So take action on it. Cut them off. Just cut the people off. They're not, they're not adding value to you. What's the point? They got to add value. They should make you better. You gotta learn something. Why would you be? Why would you want to be around a person that you're not learning anything from? It's just useless. Some of you are getting older and older, and you're still making the same mistakes that you made in your twenties. Why? Because you haven't made a decision to cut certain people off. Okay. Wes, how do we get inside and work from the inside rather than working things outside from the outside? Listen to personal development. Listen to Tony Robbins, Wesley Virgin. Listen to Les Brown, Dennis Whaley, Jim Rohn. Listen to these people. That's how you work on the inside. That's the mind. What do you find the like-minded people in your small town community? 
I found them online easily. What you mean? Get in your car and drive around. Go to restaurants. Five star. If you need to go to the next city, go to the next city. If you need to fly somewhere, fly somewhere. Do whatever it takes. Meeting people online is not enough. You need to meet these people in person if you have the opportunity to. Take a risk. Don't expect everything just to come to you. You think, you know, it's just like young men. You know, young men, I'm not going to say who it is, but some young men, they believe if they apply for a job and they think that just sitting at home waiting for somebody to call them is the way they should do it and the way they should get a job. I'm like, no one's going to call you. You got a thousand people, a thousand young men just like you that are looking for a job as well. They put in an application and you're going to sit them and wait till they call you. They're not going to call you. You got to make an effort. You got to be proactive. Call them back. Hey, how you doing? I applied yesterday. Just wanted to know if you guys pulled my application yet. What do you mean? You got to take initiative. Can't just sit there like a dumbass and waiting for somebody to call you. They're not going to call you. They don't even know who you are. You don't even have any experience. Okay. Call them. Write them a letter. Talk to the manager. Call them every day. Call them every week. Do whatever it takes so they know that you exist and do whatever it takes so they know that you want what you say you want. That's how you got to be in life. You got to be that way as well. Just because you DM somebody don't mean they're going to DM you back. Just because you write a letter to a millionaire, so what? Just because you shared an idea with a millionaire and he said, okay, it sounds good. And he don't fall through. So what? You got to persevere. This shit ain't easy. What you mean? You think just because you have, a, you have an idea? It's billions of people with ideals. What are you talking about? Your ideal is not special. You folks think your ideals are special. Oh, I got something that make you a billionaire, Wes. I mean, these are conversations that are in my DM. Dumb people. Telling me that they got a billionaire idea. I'm like, you're not even making $100,000 yet. What are you talking about? Get out of here. Why would I waste any time with you? Oh, I got a new app that I know is going to kill it. How do you know? You're still working for a job. You're still at Walmart. You don't even make $20 an hour. What are you talking about? Be smart, folks. Okay? You got to persevere. Okay? But you can't just persevere and be unintelligible. You got to be intelligent. You got to read, educate yourself about what you're trying to explain or articulate to another person. Learn how to communicate well. Learn how to speak. Learn how to talk. Learn how to use words. Do your research. Get educated. Absorb and assimilate knowledge. It's the key. Knowledge is the key to all or to the precursor to all experience. You need knowledge, folks. Will you keep a friend that's rich but disrespectful to you but teaches you? I mean, disrespect is relative, man. What do you mean he's disrespectful? Maybe he's tough. And maybe you soft. Right? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you need to toughen up. Because, see, some people might think I'm disrespectful. Because when I mentor people, I mean, I'm a, I'm a dog. I'm a savage. Because I don't accept. Nothing less than the best. And I know that everybody I deal with or work with, I know they have the potential. So I be, I'm on that ass. And I may hurt your I've made people cry. I made grown men cry. Women, I made them cry all the time, you know, and business-wise, you know, because they're bullshitting. They don't see it, though. You know, because they may say, oh, I really want this. I really want this. I really want to do this. I mean, whatever. Then you bring them on board and they do shit. They do nothing. Right? Exactly. So, you know, rich and successful people, they're tough. And they're not going to allow you to make any excuses. And they're going to call you out. You may not like it. So what? But they're there to help you. And listen, if you can't take it from a millionaire, oh, he just is bad for you hurt my little feelings, then you're just not destined to be rich. Because if you can't take that, how are you going to take all the negative comments once you become successful and wealthy? When people talk about you, like your family. Oh, you changed. I mean, how are you going to handle all that negativity? 
you can take it from the million you know, or the successful person that you're working with. Okay? All right, I got to go, man. I love you. I got to get to work. I'm King West, a.k.a. Daddy West, Wesley, billion dollar version. I got to get to work. But listen, it's cutting season. That's all I got to say. Right now, for the next three months, it's cutting season. And listen, I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm getting ready to cut some people out of my life. They got to fucking go. I don't care. I ain't thinking about them. I ain't worried about them. I'm moving forward. Because my future is brighter than ever before. My future is bright right now, but man, it's getting brighter. And for it to be bright as it can be, I got to cut certain people out of my life and I'm about to cut them. And I don't know what you're going to do, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut people. And I advise you, I'm going to make a suggestion to you. Cut them out. Cut them. It's just not worth it. And there's a part of you that know you need to cut them. You just know it. There's some people that you just know you, they just got to go. Just gotta be like, man, you know, you gotta go. I love you, man, but you gotta go. I love you, girl, but you gotta go. It's just, you are draining the shit out of me. You gotta go. Got to. You gotta, you, cause you need that emotional power for something that's gonna be more productive to your elevation of the woman or man that you wanna be. You need those emotions. You can't use those emotions on people who are just taking advantage of them. They're to your disadvantage, they're sucking. Your emotional power. You need that emotional power to build companies, to build a business, to build teams, to be able to be on more intellectual, to learn, to be able to gather information and collectively take this information and create something great. I love you. This is Wesley, Billion Dollar Virgin. Much love and let's go.